I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Uh, my, my uh, name is Tasso Zagos. I'm an uh, editor chief of Fortune Greece. would like to thank the organizers uh, for this uh, invitation. And uh, we, uh, of course, in Fortune, support uh, business um, to, uh, to business to dot zero. A lot has been heard, Mr. Pirakakis, about uh, the role of uh, technology and um, digital transformation, etc. I read recently what you said about uh, a digital um, skyscraper that you, you're building that is being built as a level by level, story by story. In 2021, what were the most important levels that were seen? And in 2022, is there a ceiling? Are you going to reach the roof of this uh, skyscraper? First of all, I'd like to tell you how many flats and levels there are because we were discussing the budget of the parliament today and we uh, um, announced uh, the data about uh, digital transactions in 2021 so far. And we have I think that um, digital transaction is uh, uh, anything from a login all the way to the state uh, operating without um, bothering you, without um, asking from anything from you. If you are that, uh, you have called to get a measure of digital transactions. So, start, they start from 8.8 in uh, million in 2018, 44 mi 34 million in 19, 94 million in 2020. And uh, we had seen some of the data for 2021. We knew that uh, the first half of the year, we reached uh, products 100 million, and we expected double that amount. But we have reached 490 million digital transactions so far we're going to exceed 500 million most interestingly though uh, most is about interoperability most of them come from inter interoperability and if we divide this number actually it's a 50 of uh, 55 cues per adult in this country so most of them are due to interoperability, uh, which means that the state has started uh, op working in a smarter manner, increasingly smart manner. And this is a major um, feat because getting all the way from 8.8 million to uh, 550 million, it's uh, actually, we're talking about um, uh, an exponential increase. So the state is becoming an assistant or, or is, it become, is coming to the service of the citizen, yes, and this is the nature of technology at large. If we look at the vaccination system and how we did, it was designed, the state is not designing, has not been designing um, uh, services uh, around the citizen but around itself. This is something quite problematic because you may have to go to 50, 60 queues um, uh, in your life, and you may be wasting your time when we transfer some property, for instance. This is uh, something that uh, is still pending, uh, the, but major quality change has not taken place yet. Uh, we have digital, uh, made most steps digital, but now we need to simplify them. In property transfer, there's going to be a major change in the digital transfer of property. These are examples. The state has to design citizen-centered um, uh, services. We did this with the vaccination um, system. We're doing it uh, gradually. We have been doing it gradually as we're moving towards the digitization of services. And now you're passing the ball. I have about a new question. A lot have, uh, has been said about uh, See, it has been said that since we have got this vaccination certificate and we know the process, can we have a digital certificate that will link uh, a decrease in the non-salary cost that will be reinvested in digital reskilling or upskilling? This is a very interesting proposal that I heard. This is something that we have to look into. But you know that uh, when we become ministers in different ministries, we realize the major importance of the Ministry of Finance or this. So discussing about the budget, this is an issue in the remit of uh, the Ministry of uh, Finance. And this is something that they will have to look into. Now, of course, it is very interesting for one to give the proper incentives in order to move to better cases uh, uh, to, or rather to the upskilling of um, um, 
employees over the time. This is something that will be happening increasingly from now on because as we're talking about industry for increasing life expectancy, etc., all this means that people will be having one more than two careers over the lifetime, not us, but our children. And a child of five years old will have to be in a, in a society where the education system will be so adaptable that we'll adapt over time since nobody can tell what this will um, this will the economy uh, there will be throughout uh, their life so reskilling and upskilling will have to uh, happen all- Constantly, okay. I will be dwell upon this uh, digital skilling, uh, upskilling, and reskilling issue. How can we have equitable access uh, to technology unless we're all upskilled and reskilled? Well, it's definitely a popular policy, and it's popular policy in the sense that it is a, a digital policy can be a mechanism to for uh, on on decreasing inequalities the policies had been designed in such a manner as um, uh, to um, favor those who have got time and money a, a, a state that moves uh, fast and equitably is a, a state that uh, creates a fair ground for everyone, fair playground for everyone. Uh, and if we think that education was the mechanism of uh, social mobility in the, tw- in the 20th century, and this was a Greek dream anyway, our uh, grandparents grand- uh, wanted uh, uh, for the children and grandchildren to study, to go to university, to be educated. Now, this mix now is joined by digitization. Because, first of all, we have got a state that will work properly for everyone and only for those who can approach it. And second, it improves productivity, infrastructure, and equal access to infrastructure uh, will be a, will become a key human right, a fundamental human right. And uh, given the challenges, the geographical uh, challenges of the country, in order to approach all age groups and uh, release all its potential, we need such infrastructure. So this is what Anglo-Saxon uh, this call uh, the technology uh, creates a level a play field. <clears throat> yes, digital, this, this is what I call digital justice or digital fairness. Um, now it was heard, uh, said earlier that the business world was for a technology to be the tool in order to have changes in justice as well. In other words, have some sort of uh, dig- uh, digital technologies to speed up um, some uh, processes. And uh, I think this is part of the RRF as well, isn't it? Should we accept something for 2022? Well, the RRF is the current uh, Marshall Plan. Uh, is the new Marshall Plan. The, it's uh, being uh, launched. Uh, it's very useful. It's going to take some time. You gave the example of the skyscraper earlier, which is quite uh, illustrative because there's a change in the paradigm, as a shift in the paradigm. In the past, uh, in IT, IT people know that there was the waterfall. Uh, there's the the waterfall concept. You expected the pharaonic project uh, at the end of the project. Uh, programmers and developers in uh, um, uh, startups have got a more agile concept. You build a sustainable product and then you build it gradually, step by step. Uh, this can only happen with digital developments only, of course. This is what we have been doing. This is the concept of GovGR, 1,200 uh, services, service by service service, bottom to top. So, because just this is one of the areas where digitization is most efficient, we have got a series of programs, of OSDPPA, for instance, about criminal justice, Athos, Chalkida, Thessaloniki, and Piraeus. There you can digitally submit your legal files. Now we're uh, granting digital signatures free of any charge to all lawyers and engineers and not notaries as well as uh, SME managers and administrators across the country. This is part of the digitization process. This is a smart move. Uh, now, um, uh, also, the um, the. Uh, What's becoming digital is uh, the um, daily uh, 
agenda of the um, um, uh, courts, these are going to be digital, and everybody will be able to say when the case will be tried in the um, uh, first instance courts. So we need to find solutions that are flexible and uh, that respond immediately to people's requests. And there are, of course, some other large projects that call for major tenders, uh, long-term design. We have got, time li- they've got longer timelines, but if we look at the strategy of the entire digital transformation, the so-called uh, digital transformation paper, one will understand that we, one will see that this is something that extends all the way to 2025. So by 2025, we will have started uh, commissioning all the RRF projects, all the projects financed on the RRF. Yesterday there was an announcement that, uh, by Deutsche Telekom regarding its the its uh, footprint in in um, telecom, uh, fixed telephony. This is, in mobile telephony, Greece has been doing excellent. If you travel to the US or other countries, you will realize that the coverage is uh, less uh, you realize that the coverage in Greece is anecdotal. Is If you go to a remote area in Greece, uh, the, there might we come uh, 25 in the world was uh, when it comes to fixed telephony we're 100 uh, in the place 100 the, we've got we haven't moved into uh, the elimination of copper from our networks and the, now it's time and uh, it's high time that we moved on to the optical fibers for good. And to do this, we need radical and uh, very fast investments. We, had, uh, we have had a plan, and I've said this, of uh, 4.8 million lines, potentially. So one line means one flat in, uh, in, uh, or one factory. So we were missing 2 million lines. But yesterday, one of the providers, Cosmote Digital, comes said these 2 million, 75%, we're going to cover it. We're going to make a private investment. So there's um, a small balance, a small part to be covered by us. And then we have got uh, the satellite internet as well from, uh, uh, provider, from various providers. This is a pending issue for the country. There's another pending issue, which is digitization in the parliament, uh, or uh, rather the digitization of everything. So paperless services, EFCA. In EFCA, why are there delays? Because we've got the information, but we don't have not got it in, in digital format. Indeed, we have uh, improved our digital uh, competitiveness, but in order to be upgraded as a country, as an economy, we need digitization of the companies, of the businesses. Shouldn't um, we find digital, some, uh, give some uh, incentives for, to private businesses? Yes, I find I like this um, uh, question. Uh, imagine. I wouldn't have imagined some years uh, ago in another, in another, if, if we said in a conference in the past that the private sector should go hand in hand with the state digitization, everybody would laugh. But this is an, a, a, an a fit um, at European level because we had um, the, the, the pandemic which uh, sped up a, our strategy and uh, there was a most rapid digitization. One of the four pillars uh, is this. So we have got the state, telecom, skills, and then businesses. This is the fourth pillar of digitization transformation. Digital transformation. So we have got uh, programs for businesses included in the uh, recovery fund, uh, like cloud services, cyber security, data analytics, AI, three areas where there will have to be the development in businesses, but there are more. There are SMEs in our country that haven't got uh, um, fundamental ERP systems or rudimentary ERP systems. It is not a matter of who's going to take what. A good law firm in uh, Greece uh, managing sensitive cases in Athens or in Thessaloniki uh, or anywhere, shouldn't they have cybersecurity too so that there is no leakage of uh, personal data of the customers? This is an obvious um, example for the, all those who have managed uh, personal data. So in this exercise, everyone is a stakeholder. The entire society 
the entire all of the businesses is a horizontal and not a vertical exercise and this makes it even more intriguing and more necessary as well as uh, complex uh, and so they need to, to the, the private and the public sector need to be tuned now what's going to happen with the identities the id cards in the first quarter of 2022 the existing id cards will be in our, our mobile wallets very clear thank you very much